Welcome to the swing sets. Climb on up. There is always a swing available. On Life on the Swing Set, the podcast, we explore ethically non-monogamous relationships, the pleasures and passions, the promise and pitfalls. We discuss all aspects of ethical non-monogamy in a fun, open, and welcoming fashion with a gleam in our eye, a bounce in our step, our hands down your pants. Ooh, (laughs) sorry, got ahead of myself. We may be biased. In fact, we most certainly are. But we don't sugarcoat and each of us speaks honestly and earnestly about our thoughts, ideas, and experiences throughout our very own Lives on the Swing Set. Thanks for swinging by. Hi, Swing Set fans. We love you. We love our listeners. We love that you engage us on Twitter at hashtag SS Podcast and on our personal Twitter accounts, but we're greedy and we'd like your help engaging more listeners and more communities. Make sure you follow on Twitter at Swing Set FM and at On The Swing Set and throw our Swing Set Family's podcasts and articles a retweet and a like. Also, feel free to yell at Dylan on Twitter. He loves that shit. Hey, bro, oh, God, Cooper, that's the last time I read something without proving it. I can sw- We're having a mailbag gangbang to answer your listener questions tonight. Questions may have been edited for clarity and length. We have some lovely verbose listeners. If you have a question for the Swing Set, please call 573-55-SWING. That's 573-557-9464 to leave your voicemail for an upcoming mailbag episode. I'm Cooper Beckett, and tonight I have with me... Hey, everybody. It's Ginger. Hey, it's Dylan. Hello, it's Katie Mack. Please tweet along with us as you listen to our episode with hashtag SSPodcast. You can find us all on Twitter at Cooper S. Beckett, at Ginger and the Prof, at Dylan the Thomas, and at that Katie Mack. And if you like what we're doing here and want to help us keep doing it, you can support us by buying a shirt and other awesome merchandise at lifeontheswingset.com slash support, or you can sign up on our Patreon page to throw us a buck or ten every time we release an episode, or set a monthly tip limit at lifeontheswingset.com slash tip. Welcome to another mailbag, guys. Gang bangs. Gang bangs. Woo-hoo. Welcome yourself. See, Dylan... I wanted your thoughts on this <laughs> grump over there. Um, how do we differentiate an episode that's actually about gangbangs that we have coming up from our gangbang the mailbag episodes? Because uh, SEO wise, they're the same. Hmm. Um, hmm. I know it's a conundrum. Um, Multiple partner? Uh, there's got to be some extra metadata or search terms here that yeah. will connect with it. Let's 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 work on that and or put that to the fans. Um, I agree. Yeah, fans. Yeah, yeah. Make them do the work. <laughs> what should yeah. we call our gangbang episode? We have we have a lovely woman coming on who is frequently the center of gangbangs, and we know you have a lot of questions. So mm-hmm. let us know, Dylan. You've got the first question. I do. All right. So James wrote, I'm very interested in an MFM with my wife. She is starting to come around to the idea as well. I would love to include a guy that is really well endowed. I think she would love it. She has expressed interest in going to a swingers club to observe. Thoughts? Well, that's great. I look forward to hearing a follow-up question. One that perhaps comes in the future. So I'm going to move us right along and play a listener voicemail. Oh, I think Katie had a thing, though. I just kind of really got a hint of what I thought the question might be, especially in him saying that he's looking for someone who's well endowed. And I'm just going to quickly say that I don't know that you can screen by dick length, but I would recommend a shirt that says you must be this long to ride. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And we're moving on. No, uh, hold on. Uh, if we're going to treat the question okay. seriously, all right, um, we'll give it the, the respect. It I know on deserve, Cassidy, but, you can you know. search by by terms used in the profile, and I know people with big dicks like to talk about it. So, especially dudes into MFMs. I know people with little dicks who like to talk about having big dicks. If if you search just the letter, the number seven. And the inch <laughs> sign, the number eight and the inch <laughs> sign, I you think you'll probably find it. Or not parentheses. Oh, God. Um, I mean, honestly, folks. if you search the word cut, you're going to find people talking about their dick. 
Or wait a second. Okay, dude Uncut. already said he was going to a swingers club with his wife, and most people are at one time or another in the swingers club going to be naked. And <laughs> and there's... unlike at the urinal, you can look over. Yes. So throwing your wife over to a dude saying, you know, you should go and you know get him inside you, uh, <laughs> that would probably work pretty well. Especially because a lot of swingers clubs have nights where they allow single men, and a lot of single men believe their best asset is their super hung cock. Well, let's, so, Dylan, let's not disregard the part of the sentence that says she is starting to come around to the idea. So I don't think throwing your wife at anyone is a good idea. Her expressing interest in going to a swingers club to observe? That's an awesome idea. Start there. Okay, I'm going to admit that I didn't really give much respect to the tone of the question, and I'm going to just have to rewind my whole shit here because I think you're right, Cooper. So, you're right. Uh, I shouldn't have been so flippant about it. And them starting out by going to a swinger club and watching how people interact uh, and watch how other couples pick up men is a good way to do it. Uh, it's, 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 you know, swingers clubs are generally a lot more safe to go to to try and pick up another man than say a regular bar uh or you know some other place with a lot of people so it's not a bad place to start especially if you guys just watch for the first couple times you go and then see what happens and the thing is you can you guys can chat with people by the side of you know the orgy room or the dance floor or whatever's happening where people are going to have their cocks out and just chat just say hey we haven't done this before you know dudes look cool don't know what we're going to do. Just enjoy it. So, yeah. Have fun at the club a couple times without playing and see what happens. Try the t-shirt. See where she gets. <laughs> and and, get and wear that t-shirt. Wear that Or, no, t-shirt. have, have your, your wife, wife wear that wife. t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wife, shouldn't wife, wear that t-shirt well, unless that's what you're looking for because you might not be interested. Actually, yeah. that's a good point. We don't have enough information. See, this is that's why the, I just missed the fucking question, Cooper, because we don't know what the situation is. You guys is. could get his and hers t-shirts. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Katie has this all wrapped up. <laughs> you know one thing that's difficult about recording these episodes out of order and way in the in the past is i forgot to say happy new year in mm. the intro happy new year everybody welcome to 2016 the year after the future of back to the future 2 let's go to a voicemail huh <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Katie, and I'm in Central Mass, and I'm a newbie swinger. Um, I have, I think, an etiquette question. Um, I'm planning a play date um, in sort of a hot wife situation, and just trying to figure out um, if it's appropriate for the male to pay for the hotel or for the female or to split. Um, in the past, on the play dates, we've actually hosted at our house. But um, that's a lot of work to get everybody out of the house and get a clean house. So this time I asked my potential play date if he was willing to host. And he said he was willing to host at a hotel and pick up the tab. Um, I'm not really feeling comfortable with that. I feel like maybe splitting it would be okay or maybe I should have offered to pay for a hotel if I didn't want to clean my house and ready my house and get rid of my kids. Um, Any thoughts on this? Thank you. I have opinions. I do too. Katie I have is opinions. the best hot wife ever who wants to wants to pay for the hotel. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. <laughs> My opinion is a quick one. Um I tend to think of things like this the way I think of who should pay for a date. Um if you are the one that asks or you bring the idea up, I think you should be prepared to be the one to pay for it. But I don't think it's inappropriate at all to split it, especially if you're uncomfortable with the idea of them covering it all themselves. Yeah. There's no hard and fast rule. Um, it'd be real shitty to invite someone to a hotel that you weren't prepared and willing to pay for. But if you want to chip in or say, listen, I really am uncomfortable with you covering the whole thing. I would feel better and more comfortable about what we're doing if I paid for half. Go for it. You're fine. I don't even think you need to use the language like I'm feeling uncomfortable about it because most people, I mean, unless there's a a little bit of, you know, uh, back and forth on whether you're going to pay or not. So like mm-hmm. dude offers to pay for a hotel and you say, I'd like to contribute to that too. And then usually it's going to be, all right, sounds good. Yeah. 
Uh, but absolutely, if you know you're if he pushes back on that, say no, no, no. I, I if we're going to do this in a hotel, I, I got we got to be equal partners in this or something like that. It, it doesn't have to necessarily be a negative thing. It just might be a bit of a conversation. That's all. That's fair. I feel like a couple of things. First of all, I think if anyone, it doesn't matter who it is, if it's a couple, if it's, you know, anyone, the, the men, the women, the like, you know, whatever works, like whoever's offering to host and pay, then I kind of feel like, okay, they're offering to host and pay like the, yeah. that's face value communication. So, and I've been in those shoes before. And they may I'm like, expect no, this something, is... but you are getting together for a hot wife date. Well, and I don't, I don't know about the expect something though. Like I, I try to think the best of people. And if someone's offering dinner, a date to buy your drink, to pay for the hotel room, I feel like, being able to accept that with grace is a cool thing and agreed. Like there's, there's this sort of overlay that is this, if someone pays for something, you owe them something. But I just, I feel like if you're going into a circumstance where you're going to have the sexy time with this person, then maybe you can get past that before you even get there. So I guess this is how I think of it. If someone offers to host, let them host and say, thank you. That's very gracious of you. The hotel room is probably $150 or 200, whatever. Are you sure that that works for you? And if they say yes, then let them host you. I mean, if you were going to host at your house and they need to host at a hotel, that's on them. If you feel like you need to split it, then don't ask or hem and haw. Just say, I'll feel more comfortable splitting the hotel room. How much does it cost? I will bring you some cash. Like, say it all ahead of time. There's nothing more awkward than having super sexy times, whether you're hosting an orgy or you're in a swap situation or it's just two people and you get to the end and you had all of these orgasms and you're in sex brain and then you're trying to figure out and do like fucking restaurant math. Yeah. Like seriously, like, yep. no, do it all ahead of time, do the adulting, figure it out and then have the decks cleared for the sexy time. And, and I also just feel like it, it, it comes down to get what you want out of the deal in the sense of, if you want to pay half, then pay half because you feel better about that. None of none of your sexy times should be distracted by who's paying for what. That should be finished, all set ahead of time. Then you get to have the sexy times without having the distraction of figuring out if you have enough cash in your purse to pay for the hotel room. Dylan, you want to queue up the next voicemail? Yes, I do. Hey, Sonita. So we're a young couple in Florida, and we love yourself. Um, I wanted to thank you for sharing your life and growth with us. Um, but we've been swingers for a year now. And listening to the podcast, we've discovered that my partner might be Polly, but I am not. Um, I love having sex with lots of awesome people, but as far as outside relationships, I'm not there yet. I'm not saying I never will be, but... Today, I'm not comfortable with either of us dating other people. Um, even when we play with others, we're involved somehow, whether we're all playing together or we're watching or whatever. So my question is, how do I deal with all of this? Thanks for listening. I feel like there's a, a really difficult area in this question, and it's something that has come up a lot outside swing set, but I don't believe we've ever talked about it on. And that's whether you can, you know, like you are gay, straight, bi, you are those things. The question is, are you non-monogamous or is it something you do? But, but, but. <laughs> that's my question. Like for the panel. Okay, can, Go Pink Power Ranger. 
Oh, I want to be the Pink Power Ranger. You are. Um, <laughs> no, he said go, Pink Power Ranger. Yes. Okay. So I think that they're already some kind of non-monogamous because they're swinging. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. I think that there are – there's a separation to be made between non-monogamy as – and an identity and an orientation versus non-monogamy as a skill set. And I think it's a really interesting debate. You know, personally for me, I feel like non-monogamy or non-monogamous is something that you just kind of are. I think that because that feels true for me. Somebody mm-hmm. else could feel differently and that's totally fucking fine. But to kind of like piggyback off of that into what I was thinking about in regards to her question specifically is if you are some kind of non-monogamous, I think that maybe the rest of it can be viewed in a mild sense as a skill set in the way that you can see a sport or an expansion pack as a skill set or an expansion pack. Listen, I can go through all of the training and drills and I can be coached, but I might never excel at football. And I feel like something like being polyamorous is the same way. You can have a non-monogamous slant and want to fuck as many people as you want to fuck. And if you want to get to a place where polyamory is something that you're either comfortable with or excel at, there are avenues to explore that. But it has to be something that you actually want rather than just trying to correct the discord between somewhere your partner is and where you are. That's, I think, going to get more murky. Um, but does, does that make sense to everybody else before I, like... <laughs> no, I, yeah, yeah, I that, agree that fully. Totally makes sense. Do you want to continue or do you want us to chime in? Um, chime in because I don't want to filibuster. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll be quick because I don't want to either. I, I feel like you can be open to a range of things, right? So, you know, we, we all, we all come up with a lot of the same skill set going through non-monogamy, but you can be open to some level of casual sex and some level of uh multiple relationships but it doesn't mean that you have to connect with one other person in that way and it doesn't necessarily mean like it, uh, okay so i i know what we're talking about here and i know it's like well are you wired to be poly are you wired to be swinger and would you be satisfied only being one or the other or you know somewhere in between if you really wanted to do one more than the other and i i i want to say i want to i want to put a stake in the ground and say Eventually, you'll you as individuals want to get to the point where you're practicing your relationships the way that you want. Yeah, and so you've got a bit of a mismatch right now, but that's not a huge deal, at least as long as you acknowledge that there's, you know, there there's a mismatch. You do the things that you want to do in common with the people that you want to do it with, and eventually, if you get to a point where you're more comfortable uh, exploring areas where you may not be comfortable exploring, but you're a little more comfortable with your partner exploring, uh, then then you can kind of let that go, let that fly and see what happens. Can I, I chime I back don't in? Think... <laughs> yeah, 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 go, go. Once you're done, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Go, Katie, go. <laughs> I also want to make a distinction here. When we're talking about the difference, and Dylan, you saying that that difference isn't really a big deal, I don't think a difference in capability is a big deal, but I think yeah. a big difference in need and comfort could be. You know, it's yep. one thing to say I'm capable of multiple relationships, but I'm happy and fulfilled in our relationship and swinging. You know, capability is one thing. We could all be capable of a lot of things. But if you find that your needs are very mismatched, I think that's going to be a little bit more of a of a thing. Agreed. I just hit the little chess timer. Like, that was my turn. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Can we play chess sometime? I don't do it well, but sure. <laughs> uh, excellent. <laughs> Can we play strip chess? Is that a... Th- oh. <laughs> well, of course it's a thing. Anything can be a strip game. <laughs> okay. I mean, and if it's not, you just take off clothes at a regularly decided interval. <laughs> You have a timer every three and a half minutes it dings. Yeah. One of the little ones, you know, like you get in the board games and you flip it over. And then when that's empty, you take off an article. 
I, I used to play competitive chess, and we absolutely <laughs> had to, to use strategy, right? used to play competitive strip chess. I, I, I <laughs> and the thing is, though, like, what, what's your goal when you're playing strip chess, right? Do you want to get Distraction, to the point Distraction, Dylan. No, no, I, I, I feel like... Well, okay, distraction. And winning. Yes, because you ultimately want to win. But I think... There's there are a couple different victory conditions for winning, right? <laughs> you you want to end up with yourself mostly naked and the other person all the way naked, so that you have <laughs> the best chance of interesting things happen. I think, because or you know you purposely so so you don't go for the stranglehold win. You don't back somebody into a corner while protecting all your pieces, and then all of a sudden you know checkmate them, and then all of a sudden they're completely naked and you've lost a scarf. Uh, no, you want to you want to kind of pace yourself and and really play the sacrifice game and and really goad people into getting into a position where you then nail them to the fucking wall. But you're already mostly naked by that time, and and then after you nail them to the wall in the game, you can you know pick them up, throw them against a wall, and nail them to the wall. And you're because you're already mostly naked, you just pull out your cock, and then all of a sudden you're ready to go. We should do strip chess soon. Gabe. Clearly, Dylan has thought this through. I really didn't, but I do. I want to know. <laughs> Remember that gavel from the last episode that I wanted? Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll I'll take us there. Ginger, <laughs> would you ask the next question? Will I ask the next question? Will you question? read the next question? You don't have to just ask a question. <laughs> I was going to say, what question do you want me to ask? I have so many questions. All right. Hey, Swingset friends. I'm going to interrupt Ginger and read the question for her. Uh, her recording setup failed for a moment, so you don't want to hear what actually came through. So just pretend I'm as sexy and sultry as Ginger for a moment, and here goes. Would a guy give me a warning that he was going to ejaculate during a blowjob? My husband says yes, that it would be rude not to warn the girl. I also understand accidents can happen. I've covered this on the show probably a handful of times. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you give a warning. You give a warning. You give a warning. It's not like throwing a glass of water in a bad date's face. It's, 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 you're, you're coming in her mouth. You, you tap her on the shoulder. You gently stroke her cheek. You, grab her hair harder, whatever you've got to do to indicate that you are going to come in her throat, on her face, on her tits, or somewhere you're not quite sure where it's going to land, you give her the high sign. I'm just saying. Where do you want it, baby? There you go. That's a sexy question. Mm -hmm. So I understand accidents can happen. I absolutely do. Eh. No, <laughs> no, they can. Thank they you, absolutely Cooper. can. I, no, as someone who possesses the equipment, and I guess Dylan can challenge me on this, uh, it's it's sometimes surprising how at what time it arrives, but it has never arrived so suddenly for me that I couldn't tap someone. And also... You can have that fucking conversation before cocks go in mouths. Listen, all I'm saying is you have the time to scream now. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yes. Yes. Yes, yes to that. <laughs> like, he, 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 I, Dylan, I have... tell us how you were surprised by coming. Well. <laughs> uh, story time. No, not, not we, we won't go into a story. We'll just say that I don't seek out a lot of blowjobs or a lot of hand jobs because those don't quite get me there, all right? And it's not because they're not great, because I've been with some fucking amazing, oh my god, amazing women uh, giving amazing blowjobs, and I'm thinking of one right now, and I need to stop thinking about her because I haven't seen her in a Dylan, while. Dylan, come and... back to us. Because you're going you're so, to need jail now. Is that what I'm hearing? I don't come a lot from blowjobs and hand jobs, so it is a bit of surprise to me when when i'm with somebody ah. that's enthusiastic enough and skilled enough to do it and when it happens uh it's usually pretty quick and so yes i have been in a position where somebody's sucking my cock and i don't because i'm getting my cock sucked with a condom it's not a huge deal compared to getting it sucked well, without i mean it's, a condom. it's actually not a big deal at all but like, like at all no no but i still want to let them know because there's maybe they'll want to look into my eyes while they're sucking my cock while I'm coming. Maybe they'll want to play with themselves and get themselves off at the same time. It's it's if if you're with somebody that does it 
habitually or does it carelessly, then it's because they don't care about your pleasure and they don't care about your body as much. But if you're with somebody that ha- you have an established pattern of like being careful, being considerate, and you plan ahead of time, then cool. But yeah, absolutely screaming, oh God, I'm coming, or I'm coming, you know, and then it happens. And even even a quarter second alert lets that person know that you 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 got a level of respect for them like an earthquake early warning system like a, tu- a tsunami early warning system <laughs> it may yeah. give you a minute to evacuate but that minute might might be enough listen yeah. you might not be able to avoid it at all but at least you'll know <laughs> yes 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 at least you can <laughs> close your eyes close your eyes close your eyes it is rude it is absolutely rude not to warn the what guy. if you say duck and cover I think that enough people don't understand that anymore that you'd have to explain that ahead of time. I've been playing too much Fallout. <laughs> or watching too many 60s <laughs> videos take. about the nuclear uh, apocalypse. So, yeah, yeah. That, that, you guys remember Star Fox and N64? <laughs> I oh, yeah, I do. To do, do a, a barrel, barrel roll. roll. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, that is two for two. Where you go with awesome classic video games. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. <laughs> I'm so going to buy you a couple bottles of cheap-ass wine. (laughs) Okay, I have to mention here, this is completely (laughs) off show, but apparently Frank Underwood, Kevin Spacey, Mm -hmm. just announced season four in the middle of the Republican debate. Yeah! (laughs) (laughs) Well done, well done. And apparently House of Cards season four drops on March 4th, so that's pretty awesome. Oh! Nice. More Frank Underwood. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to take a commercial break and we'll be back with more listener questions. Hey, Swingset fans, we want your help. We're searching near, far, long, short, and wide for opportunities to bring our message and our passion to the people, possibly live, but definitely direct. If you know of an event or a space near you that may be interested in having the swing set out, let us know. Send us information at contact at lifeontheswingset.com. Thanks. When it comes to online dating, we here at The Swing Set believe that Cassidy is the best one out there. It looks great, it's intuitive and easy to use, and it's simply full of potential sexy friends. Still the fastest growing online swinger dating site in the world, Cassidy has been our go-to site for the last three years. If you sign up using our link at lifeontheswingset.com slash K-A-S-I-D-I-E, you'll get some free time to explore the site. And you can decide for yourself if Cassidy is the site for you. Hope to see you there at Cassidy.com. Are you one of the millions of people who think monogamy isn't a good fit? If you're polyamorous, in an open relationship, a swinger, or curious, InfinityCon is for you. InfinityCon is a sex-positive educational conference covering a wide range of topics on ethical non-monogamy and alternative sexuality. Come for the education. Stay for the great social events, including Saturday night's Black Tie Poly Prom. InfinityCon is February 4th through 7th, 2016, in Atlanta. Visit infinitycon.net for tickets and hotel reservations. Hey all, Cooper here to tell you the exciting news that my best-selling book, My Life on the Swing Set, Adventures in Swinging and Polyamory, is now available on Audible. As you may know, if you sign up for Audible now, you can get your first month and first audiobook free. So why not make it mine? Go to audible.mylotss.com and get eight hours of newly produced audio content now. If you crave other methods of book consumption, you can purchase the DRM-free ebook or paperback, as well as the audiobook direct from me at mylifeontheswingset.com. You know you'd rather hear than read about my epic prostate orgasm. Why not do it now? We at The Swing Set believe that being risk-aware and practicing safer sex makes our lifestyle exponentially better. With that in mind, we're partnering with Lucky Bloke, global condom experts, and the best online source for condoms and lube to say no to mediocre condoms and bring the most pleasurable, safer sex directly to our listeners. 
Go to swingsetcondoms.com to see a specially curated selection of condoms, lubes, and assortments to reintroduce variety and excitement into the protection portion of your playtime. You should especially take note of the deluxe sampler put together by us at the Swing Set for your party and date night kit. Making your condom purchase here supports both us at the Swing Set and the wonderful purveyors of safer sex, the Lucky Bloke. Swingsetcondoms.com Welcome back to Life on the Swing Set. Tonight we're doing a listener mailbag and Katie has our next listener question. This question is, my wife and I are new to the lifestyle. We've only been to three events. The most recent was a hotel takeover. Neither of us had played at any of the events until the takeover. We were invited to a room where there was group play. My wife was invited to play with the host's wife and had a great time. Everyone in the room made her feel welcome. They would have all played with her if given the chance. I expected to be included as well. Oh, oh, okay. (laughs) As she played with the wife, I was standing around with my dick literally in my hands, not knowing what to do or how to feel. No one in the room was even aware of my presence. No one made any effort to include me. In fact, I was completely ignored by everyone. I'm having conflicting feelings. I'm very happy that my wife had a great time. She thanked them by email for making her feel so welcome. They invited her to play with them again. I'm resisting the strong urge to let them know that my experience was the complete opposite. I don't want to cause drama, but I don't want to interact with them at all. Am I just being a baby or a jerk about this? All right. <clears throat> yes. I No. Well, no, yes, because No. Okay. Because Go Katie. We'll, I, we'll all get a chance. But yes, because People were very unlikely ignoring him. Very unlikely. Far more likely is he was doing what I usually do, which is not saying anything to anybody. And you know who's less uh, attractive at the orgy than the person sitting in the corner looking unapproachable? No one. That's who. You need to approach people. Okay, go on. Okay, if I might try to bring a little more nuance and a little bit less, this is probably what happened to the table. <laughs> Cooper, I love you. And I'm not even saying that you're wrong, Coop. I I don't think that you're being a baby or a jerk about it. I think that you're being new about it. Very true. And, you know, standing there literally with your dick in your hand, not knowing what to do or how to feel. Like, yeah, that's totally frustrating. And I think that there is a reality that in most situations, all things being equal, everyone equally attractive and approachable and naked, your wife is probably going to get a lot more attention than you. The law of averages suggests. The law of averages suggests. And that doesn't mean that she'll have more success or that she'll have more experiences. It means that she is more likely to be approached and asked. And if you can learn to kind of sit with your feelings of not being the one who's being approached consistently, or maybe in some cases at all, and learn to develop the comfort of going and being the one who asks or not being so focused on what she's doing, unless that's something that you're really trying to do together. I think that you could have a way better time. I don't think that you should bring up, you know, this, I didn't have a good experience here. I think that this is just handy data to bring to your next experience. And again, I don't think you're being a jerk. I don't think you're being a baby. I think that you're going through a lot of really new experiences and things, and you need to be gentle with yourself and with everyone else involved, that everyone is just trying to have the best time that they could possibly have, and they're trying to do that for themselves. And if you could get into the mindset of trying to do that for yourself too, I think you might have a better time. I'd like to offer as well in that vein – Katie, that you always have the option to interact with your partner. And so if you're standing in the corner or standing on the wall or whatever with your dick in your hands, which is actually pretty sexy, um, you know, to So to go, watch, to a, go to an orgy with Ginger there. Well, there's that. Um, which I but, recommend to everybody. Well, thank you. Heartily endorse. As much as I'd love to Five be stars. at everyone's... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> would come again. Is this would my recommend. Yelp review again? This is your Yelp review. Ginger does not yes. scale up. Not to that level. 
<laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> ginger is a is a limited is a precious limited natural resource. Yes, and we Ooh. need to make sure to conserve that natural resource. So, like fusion as much cores as in Fallout Four. Feels, well, she feels like she has a lim- an unlimited amount of energy and an unlimited capacity. The fact is, uh, we need to protect Ginger from herself and let her know that she she just needs to fit as many people as possible into a limited amount of time and then take the rest of let's say the week off okay well thank you i love that you're protecting me from myself because if there's anything if there's ever been a kernel of truth in my existence it's been that and it's happened on the podcast which is amazing (laughs) So I'm just going to say thank you, Dylan, for that. I'm like, I just realized there's a little bit of a jerk in there, too. No, no, no. That's okay. That's okay. I can I'm take it. I'm explaining to you what your limits are. That's great. That's a great I position for me to Dylan, take as a man. Dylan, you're mansplaining. I, I really was. And I, I really wanted it to be like a wildlife conservation thing. And then I moved a little bit left. And I'm like, oh, fuck me. I'm no, just going just... to keep doing it. No, you've just seen me play, and you know that for if you brought me for just provisions and hooked day, me up to an IV, I'd just keep fucking. You I can get assure this. that yeah. Ginger like, never goes without the nutrients. I will supply she needs. you with champagne and cheese. Perfect. So champagne there it is. I want to get back to our our newbie with his dick in his hand, which again I think is very sexy. Is remembering that you always have the option to engage with your partner in a very sexy way. So if she's interacting with the, the host wife or other people to, and and I'm picturing them on the bed, having sexy times and people kind of watching and gently touching and going to kind of her head area and just kind of like, you know, playing with her hair as she's getting pleasured or touching her body, kind of running your hands over her breasts and her belly and just not being invasive like in their space, but just like giving her that extra pleasure. You always have that option. And then what happens is people see you in action because I've got to tell you, I've had multiple experiences and group sex experiences where people have opted out. They just want to be a voyeur. Mm -hmm. So people may be reading your body language as not sure if you're up for playing. Um, and again, I've had that happen more often than not because, and maybe it's in, in the woman's case, it's kind of a, oh, she's over there and opting out or keeping her panties on for a reason that I don't necessarily know, but I'm not going to ask. And, you know, maybe with guys, it's a whole different thing because you're kind of like, there, like, Hey, put me in coach, but coach isn't paying attention, you know, well, cause he's guys, watching the game. The guys are really focused, you know, it's. <laughs> If everybody's focusing on their own pleasure, which everybody is responsible for focusing on their own pleasure, and then people are also focusing on their partner's pleasure, you know, you you need to bring yourself in. You need to be the coach saying, go on in. That's why I called him a baby jerk. And I don't mean that, that he's a baby jerk. Really, it was that... You 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 cannot blame anybody, really. Even even your partner. You it's tempting, and I've done it, to look at your partner and say you should have been concerned that I wasn't having fun. It's well, really tempting to do. It that. is, but don't it is. because that's a baby jerk thing to do. <laughs> All right. Well, Cooper, that was the worst walk back that you've ever had. No, this is tough love because I have done every single fucking thing this guy listed here. (laughs) I have felt every single baby jerk feeling, every one of them. So I'm saying I'm a baby jerk. I've done it. I've been there. And what you need to do is one, not care or be willing to approach. And it's best when you can do both. That is so true. And I'd say though, it, not to walk back what you're saying. I love, I love that you're putting it out there and you're, you've been there. And I think, I think almost everyone's been there in that space of, oh gosh, am I included? Does anyone want me? Does, you know, those kinds of questions. And I just, when you're in that energy, people feel it. 
and your body language shows, you know, your shoulders roll down, you, you close down. And if your energy is closed and prof and I talk in this language often, if your energy is closed, people won't approach you. And that's not a blame the victim. That's not a, Hey, it's all your fault or you're being a baby or a jerk. It's none of those things. It's just, just notice how you are engaging the room. And if you stay as you're suggesting coop in the sexy vibe, even if it means no one's going to touch you or you're not going to get off, if you stay in the sexy vibe, people feel that energy and you won't be like, perceived as, oh, that guy who doesn't want to be touched or who's just being a voyeur or who looks left out or you're not, you're not going to be perceived that way. Stay open in the sexy energy and choose to engage in, you know, appropriate ways with your partner. Or like you said, step up into asking, like, I'd love to touch you or watch from a closer vantage or whatever it is. And I just feel like what this often comes down to, and Katie said it because she basically said, you're not being any of these things. You're just new is we tend to flip the switch really fast when we're new. Cause, cause because we're insecure mm-hmm. and, and it's new. And so all of a sudden, if you are off in the shadows or, or your wife's getting attention or whatever, you immediately go to that flip the switch for safety. Like, okay, I don't know what to do now. So I'm just going to stand back here and do nothing and be close, have closed energy. What I encourage people to do is just kind of be soft and fluid and relaxed and not flip any kind of switch. Just be in the sexy vibe and, and see what happens. And again, not with the expectation, which I think is an important word to raise here, not with the expectation that you'll always be included, but with, but giving off the energy that you'd like to be included or proposition someone when you feel less new. But there's, there's a lot of pitfalls that, that can happen in this scenario. And it really is up to you how you want to continue to engage. I'm going to, Harken back for a moment to the year 1992, where <laughs> a young whippersnapper named Ross Perot sat down what? in his office in a leather chair with a with a whiteboard and a flip chart next to him and decided to explain to America why economics work or why, why the economy works and share with everybody uh, why he had a great understanding of it and why he was best suited to be the president, because he understood how the country worked. And I think that there's a valuable exercise to be had here because you need to understand how multiple partner situations, especially at a hotel takeover can work. Okay. So let's start out with the basics here. You're new to the lifestyle. You're in a hotel takeover. You haven't played before. So there's this whole realm of possibilities. And I'm going to point at Katie when I'm talking about this. There's a whole realm of possibilities that you may or may not be open to, but you don't know because you haven't had them yet. And because you haven't actually played at a hotel takeover, you don't know how people move there, okay? And so there's there's kind of an expectation, fair or not, at a hotel takeover, that if somebody invites somebody, somebody else to do something, that those people that are involved are going to be good enough to be able to play and kind of make their own way in this. And that's when I kind of point to Cooper and Ginger on, like, you know, you, you have to be able to reach out and express your desire and express what you want because that negative energy will not get you anywhere. But because you and your wife haven't played at a hotel takeover, you guys kind of made a mistake in my view here, okay? And the mistake was not checking in with each other enough if something was cool. And so here's where I break down the uh, the flip chart into a, you know, a nice, you know, diagram of where things happen. Uh, they asked you two to to join them for join them in a room for some group play so whether it was the four of you or whether there were more people there you know it doesn't really matter but they invited you to a room for group play where group play was happening and then they invited that couple invited your wife to play with somebody else great 
did you two check in and make sure that was okay? Did you discuss, you know, hey, you know, are you okay with, you know, me going to play with her? Yeah, okay. You know, am I going to stand here by myself if I'm going to join you guys? There was a, there was some communication that that didn't really happen there because you didn't communicate your common desires. Your wife got invited to do something. And between the two of you, you both had every right to say, we kind of want to play together. And the thing is, your wife getting invited to play, uh, especially with another woman, is an opening for you to say, you know, I would love to watch her play with her, but I'd, you know, I'd also like to join in. And that that kind of call and response protocol that can happen in those moments when you're you're, you're swingers are fucking great at negotiating things at light speed, unless they're not because they haven't figured out how to do it yet or because they haven't been shown the ropes. Uh, and that's what's happening here. You're negotiating your your play thing. Your your play thing. Fuck me. You're negotiating. <laughs> Your playtime here, okay, and and you missed out on that because you didn't chime up or you didn't, didn't speak up. So they went to play, and your wife went to play, thinking you were cool because you two didn't quite check in on the level that you needed to. And then when you realized, you know, I want a little more, you didn't have the tool set necessary to know whether you could interrupt them or not. And the thing is, like, I I don't mean like interrupt. Hey, I want in. You know, hey, I want you guys to stop. I mean, you can use some of the strategies that Coop and Jin mentioned uh, to, you know, whether you check in, whether you try to join in, whatever it is, everybody's focused on everybody in the thing right there. But it is not hard for you to go over there and say, I'd love to join in or go behind your wife and take a little bit of a liberty with your wife. Because one thing that is not cool in most of swinging is some other group of people taking your wife into something and then them telling the partner, you know, tell, them telling you and telling the partner, the person they just brought in that they cannot be involved. That is not ever cool. There are a whole host of other things that could happen. Okay. They could say, you know, like we're really just interested in playing with your wife and then you two get to make a decision. And then, yeah, it's an interruption, but it's because you didn't figure that out ahead of time. And, Figuring it out then before things progress is better than the alternative, which is you standing around with your dick literally in your hands, not knowing what to do or knowing how to feel with nobody in the room being aware of your presence. And that's why mapping out where each interaction happened is important because you missed out on a few critical areas. You missed out on the, the, uh, you checking in with your wife, the negotiation with all the people that invited you guys into play, the negotiation where they invited your wife to play, and then any further interaction where you could have joined in or tapped out and you know, struck out on your own or whatever it was. So uh, I will throw in with Katie and say, you're not a baby or a jerk. You're just new. But you can take all of this and do a better job next time. So you feel the way you feel for totally reasonable reasons. Just understand that you both, your wife and you, kind of collectively did it to yourselves but that it's nobody's fault. It's a learning experience. And if there's something that we've been saying for almost six years on this show, it's that mistakes don't have to be the end of the world. You have to give each other, uh, both individually and collectively, the room to make mistakes and be okay. I have one more thing. There's a very good possibility that you being upset about this had made your wife feel shitty about a situation that she was obviously very happy about because she thanked them by email for making her feel so welcome. So I would like to strongly encourage you to apologize to your wife for making her feel shitty because you don't want her to feel shitty. Assuming that he did. We're not entirely sure, but you know, it might happen. I'm, I think if he's mentioned he doesn't want to interact with them at all, he might be making her feel a little shitty. I think okay. in general, no, that, most fair. people that's should apologize assumption. to their partners for making them feel shitty, even when they didn't think they did. Yeah. Because we often do that. You know, this dude, like between you and I, Cooper, this dude shouldn't feel, you know, he may have negative feelings about them right now, but mm -hmm. I don't think he should avoid trying to interact with them. No. I do think he should avoid messaging them and saying he didn't feel great because this was something of their own. You know, and the other thing is these people, this couple may be able to help him with the issue. 
Yeah, they've probably you know, done this before. When I had like, this issue, I talked to the host of the party and said, hey, this is what happened for me. And this is what came up. And I don't really know what to do. And the host of the party laid out a whole bunch of solutions on how to process the party. We host stuff all the time and we make ourselves available yeah. to be talked to by other people. That's what they're there for. So, And you know um, who else is just new? Babies. <laughs> and you know what happens? <laughs> Babies grow up. And so I'm encouraging you to grow up. <laughs> you really, really stick into that baby jerk thing. Hey, it's, yeah. It's <laughs> so really, listeners, what we've learned today is don't ask the question, even hypothetically, if you are a baby or a jerk. Because Cooper will always say, yes, you are. Well... <laughs> Because usually it means you know that something you just wrote in that email makes you sound like a baby and or a jerk. Hey, I, I think we can pretty confidently say that we understood what happened with this dude. Absolutely. We've been there. And you know what? He now ha We've laid out a whole shitload of tools to make sure this doesn't happen in the future and have a fucking good time fucking in a fucking party. Yes. So. And from one baby jerk to another. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. You can do it. I think I'm just going to bleep that out. No, that's important. Isn't it the most important thing in the world when you feel like you're doing something wrong to know that someone else did that wrong? All right. Since we're going here, I yes, but I think you're going way past that and you're actually belittling him. I know he asked the question, right? Are, but are you kidding? No, I know. He's saying no. specifically that I am you. And I grew out of it using the words that he threw out means it can be done, Dylan. I am in no way belittling this listener. In I know no exactly way. what you're trying to do. And while we may choose different language to do it, I'm right there with you, bro. So how about I read the next question? Please. All right. So. Is there a solution to simultaneously stimulating the G-spot for them and the P-spot for me at the same time during pegging without extensively limiting possible sex positions? Multiple people have had problems with field O's falling out while doing any position other than them laying on their back with their legs closed. Cooper? I have well, solutions. I have things to say. I know you have solutions. I have solutions and, and I know specific Ginger has solutions. items to purchase. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he's got a shopping list for you. I do. Are you ready? Pen and paper in hand. Okay. So uh, we're going to put two links in the show notes, and I've already given them to Dylan. So uh, Yeah, you have. There. Good job. Uh, it, number one is uh, the G-spot, P-spot question. Field dough basically has a straight up and down bulb on the back of it, which isn't great for G-spot stimulation. The Fuse Tango, which is very similar looking to the Field dough and very similar in size and shape, except the internal part for the woman is is pointed directly forward at the G-spot. And not only can I say that this is a much uh, better designed product, but I can say from experience that it feels really good in the P-spot side, and from knowing a number of women who have used it, uh, that it feels really good on the G-spot side. So Fuse Tango is number one. Number two, the biggest problem in the sex toy industry when it comes to these type of toys is referring to them as strapless strap-ons. They are not strapless strap-ons. By and large, most of them are really bad at being strapless strap-ons because they require an amazing amount of kegel control that most people just don't have. Number two, it's a little different using a quote, strapless strap-on, to have sex with a woman as it is to have penetrative anal sex with a man. And uh, really, let's just go with anal. Right. I was going to say, yeah. So it requires a little bit more control. And the best way to have more control is with a harness. So while it may seem like a strapless strap-on, really you should be calling it a dual-ended dildo. And using it with a harness, and the harness has to be one of the kind that have a pass-through panel, really increases dramatically the control. Now, if your partner wants to have less, you know, strappy strap-on experience, 
Um, my partner, Ophelia, loves the rodeo uh, briefs harness. They look just like um, uh, boys' briefs, they, and they have a pass-through in the front, so you slide the dual dildo through and insert it. And she says they're incredibly comfortable, and they wash in the washing machine. So the rodeo briefs and the fuse tango are my solution for your problem. And now I will cede the floor to anyone else. I don't know that I have much to add to that other than, you know, there is definitely some experimentation that needs to happen. And, you know, ultimately I, I can't, um, overstate the idea that a harness is necessary. I mean, you know, we're, we're all sexual superheroes in our own way, but to have anal sex while using a strapless strap on is, is pretty varsity level. Um, so with that being said, I, I just, just take, take the way it's, it should or supposed to look <laughs> and just put that aside and find the thing that works for you. And Coop suggestions will definitely get you closer if not there. So just keep, keep trying and have fun with it and don't turn it into a chore. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm definitely certain you'll get there. I mean, adventures in in G and P spot stimulation are just the kind of adventures I'd like to have. So enjoy. <laughs> and also if, if you have the field dough, don't let my degradation of it dissuade you from buying a harness or acquiring a harness and using it with the field dough, because that will get you closer to the solution you want than just continuing on with that. Well, it, I actually, tweeted about this uh I, I i said that you were explaining why the field was a competent version one toy like i i i know that oh no you're gonna call down the field lobby well fuck it i'll take <laughs> it but you know as as a responsible uh political figure in the swinger universe uh y you have to sometimes speak truth to power and i'm okay with that fieldo was it was a big thing when it got popular but there are better there are better ways to do it and everybody's already explained it so i don't need, really need to do it but it's yeah we're not shitting on the field though we're just saying it's a little older it's a it, little it was generation one of yeah. this specific concept and it did an amazing thing yes it did unfortunately it also spawned the idea of the strapless strap on yeah okay do you got anything I just keep thinking through the logistics of it. And I mean, if the question is like, is there a way to stimulate the G spot and prostate at the same time during pegging? I just want to be like, I mean, God, I don't think without another person um, in the mix. Why not? Because I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to maybe MacGyver this too much. I'm trying to imagine if she's wearing. A harness that's of the like tight variety uh -huh. that provides some kind of vaginal coverage. I could maybe see a situation where she could have a toy, whatever kind of toy works for her G spot, whatever dildo, whatever that looks like, and find a way to make it stay. Oh, Katie, have well, you there's... know what I'm recommending, right? The dildo I'm recommending. Are you still talking about the field? I'm sorry. I totally zoned out no, while I was trying to think about this click, too hard. Click the link in Skype and look at the dildo that I'm recommending. Yeah, this is the Fuse Tango. It is dildo. a G-spot dildo with a giant cock on the front of it. That well, link doesn't work. I... You added an extra zero at the end, by the way. <laughs> what? I just see a really scared looking pickle. Yeah, here, here's a better link. Cooper Cooper failed at cut Oh, shit. Yeah, there you go. I, no, it doesn't have the affiliate thing. Anyway. I'm sorry. No, that's totally what happens when I zone out. I was trying to think about that. Oh, yeah. No, I've yeah. seen that. Look, I. <sighs> but, you know, the, the other thing, Katie, is that it, let, let's say that we go with your, like, okay, you have the dildo that attaches. You could fit something like a wee vibe, a wee vibe uh, in there, which is, you know, which will do the stimulation part. And. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just have feelings about the wee vibe. Um, 
we, and they're we all not do. great ones. We all do. But... I have feelings about the Wii Vibe too. Yeah. I, I'm and... just suggesting that there are ways to kind of hack things the way Katie was uh, mentioning, but that something like the Fuse is a good solution. For me, this really, really feels like one of those things that somewhere along the way, you get it in your head that you want to do it. And then, okay, how do we make this work? How do we do this? We need to do the thing. We, we How do I how do I do this thing? And that's, that's great. I'm all about goals. But there are so many variables, whether or not like the – the double-ended thing here actually stays in you, which is a big if and no, has a lot of factors. Katie, with the harness. Well, I'm not just talking about staying in you at all. I'm talking about staying in the right place. I, I'll just, me. I'll just, I can speak for four different women who've used this, who say it's right at the G spot. I'm just saying. There are a few different solutions to this, other than the fuse and. Uh, it's actually a little unfortunate that it's uh, without friends that already have the toys, it's kind of hard to try things out and see what fits you the best. Now, having said that, if you've cultivated a nice little friend group, then you can all kind of try out each other's toys and see what works. But there are mm. a few toy, a, a few dildos uh, and or mounting apparatus that hit in different places that might do the job. Uh, for example, uh, the Fuse Tango works really well for Tonya. Uh, but the enjoy us, uh, mm -hmm. modular <sighs> strapless strap on, uh, <laughs> they is... kind of fit together like Legos. <laughs> yeah, it, it really does. And, and it, it's actually really cool, but the internal part of it for her doesn't quite fit her the right way. And so it generates too much pressure in areas that are not the G spot to work for her. So there are multiple solutions to this problem and it's just a matter of trying them out. What I'm really, if I'm going to like cliff note, like Katie's final thoughts on this, it's not that I think it's impossible. I'm, I'm skeptical. And in that skepticism, I'm also highlighting the point of if you want to do a thing because you think you'll enjoy it, that's great and keep trying. But sometimes I think we get really, really attached to the ideas of things that we want to do and accomplish. And if something isn't working for your body or there isn't a way, it's, there's no shame in admitting that. That's a really great point. That's really, I mean, yeah, maybe I'm just skeptical because of my body or my things. I'm looking at all of this going, eh, I don't think so. But I mean, keep trying. This might just be your white whale. And <laughs> fuck, if you guys can pull it off, like call me Ahab, like we're good. I'm happy for you. But <laughs> Hey, boys were my white whale. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. I No. What am I getting wrong? I would you? say white whale is something you actually want to uh, acquire. Well, I think Dylan wanted to want it. I, re I <laughs> yeah, really Yes, did. wanting to be by that's your white whale. It's a metaphor, okay, okay, just like okay. Moby Dick. I mm -hmm. Gotcha. <laughs> did anybody else have to do a little giggle about Dylan's by comment in Moby Dick? Anybody? Anybody? Just me? <laughs> I did. I did. Okay. I, we're just tired, apparently. Well, Ahab just wanted a big white penis, right? Mm-hmm. Ha ha. Ha I mean, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to move he off He says of, it quietly. I'm going to move off of that. And uh, I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of my business because it happens to be about a cox also. So Okay, so, so what you're going to do is you're going to transition us out of this phase of the show into a different phase of the show, right? You're not just going to start business. I'm Isn't that the same yes? thing? Question mark. What I'm suggesting is we wrap up our listener questions by saying that's it for questions for this week. If you'd like to send us a question, <laughs> please leave us yes. a voicemail at 573-55-SWING. That's 573-557-9464. Now we're going to do some business. Dylan's got business. I... <laughs> You're adorable, Cooper. It was an incredibly competent segue. 
Look at me created, hosting. I be hosting. Created by a man who is now almost six years into podcasting this motherfucker right here. I like, am almost seriously. six years into podcasting this motherfucker uh, right here. Yeah. I think, I think. I'm just Cooper saying, really he's got my... a little experience under his belt, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I've got a lot of things under my belt. Yeah, well, you know, pitching softballs over here. Okay, Dylan. No, no, please continue. Dylan's catching, <laughs> so, you know, it works. <laughs> no, he wants to I do want to hear your catching. business, Dylan. Dylan, anytime you want to give some business. Will you expose your business, Dylan, please? <laughs> Bend over and expose the business. I'm just enjoying the ride. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually you have to do That's your business. That's what she said. <sighs> so I, uh, we had, we had a question in the, in the last gang, the mailbag in episode 234. And it was uh, a dude that had uh, some problems with erectile dysfunction. And one of the things that he mentioned was, uh, Sometimes there's a little bit of time between, you know, having to, like, grab a condom and getting it on, and you can sometimes lose an erection. So, uh, really quickly, preparation helps with that. Having everything within arm's reach where you actually know where it is all the time, that helps. But the reason I bring that up in my business is because I found, uh, I've been sitting on a condom stash that I acquired from Desire, right? (laughs) Yeah, they they were in your trunk. (laughs) No, 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 no. They they were in they were literally in uh my my luggage, <laughs> which I suppose you could classify as a trunk. I don't know, whatever. Yes, anyway. that is that is, in the old timey sense, Dylan. Were you well, on the Titanic? I don't he was. you had a trunk. He wa- he walked aboard and said, "I'm going to sink this bitch." Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dylan, we're all sorry. Carry on. <laughs> no, please proceed, governor. This is en- this is enjoyable. I'm not so sorry. He does this to me all the time. <laughs> That's fair. So I bring up the preparation thing because equipment's also important. And I found that one of the things that I brought home from Desire was a new uh, a new condom that I hadn't tried before. It's the Unique Pull. Okay. Now, I have found an awesome set of condoms that I really enjoy. Uh, but they all still have uh, the, kind of the same problem. Whereas, uh, you know, let's say I'm not super hard at the moment. Uh, I, I really need to wait until I'm fully erect to get one of those condoms on, because if I don't, I will roll that condom right off through my natural uh, inflation. So, uh, and even when I am fully erect, if I'm really rushed in the moment or just want to get it on, or if somebody wants to put a condom on me, uh, if they don't do it right, I will have to take the time to pull it back off and put it back on. And when I say do it right, I mean leaving the appropriate amount of room between the top of the condom and the top of my cock and getting the ring all the way back to the base of my cock where it will sit nicely and stay. And a lot, the big difference for me between condoms that are not great for me and condoms that are is whether number one, how hard it is to get the ring back. And number two, uh, whether it will stay when I get it back. I mean, it's, it's not like I have a a cone for a cock or anything. It's just for some reason (laughs) it, that, it, it, that is it, possibly, Dylan, the best thing you have ever said. I, it's I, mean, not that I, I, I think I think I'm going to call it, <laughs> you know, it is early in 2016, but that's the best thing you say in 2016, ever. <laughs> it's not like I have a cone for a cock or anything. That's but pretty awesome. Dylan because Thomas. Of, because, of the, because of the foreskin and because of the way it all works, uh, you get it back there and it'll roll up a little bit and then it'll roll up a little more and then all of a sudden your condom's hanging half off your cock and then if you're inside somebody and you come out sometimes you leave it inside and you don't get the full production you know so like I haven't had like oh my god the condom's broken accidents I have within the last year had a oh hey the condom fell off accident and I've actually been fucking you basically unprotected and you know you take the appropriate actions after that to to mitigate things not a, not a huge deal you know because i usually play safe with everybody or i play safe with everybody stuff that happens after that but that's the kind of stuff that makes either a lazy you know i've been lazy in putting that on or i let somebody else put it on or it wasn't a great condom the unique pull apparently has solved all of those problems because uh, i described it on twitter as a rip cord for your cock okay so it is a rolled up condom with a couple of plastic strips that stick out of it. And you hold the condom by the strips. 
and then you pull it down your cock. And there's no reason to try and leave any artificial room near the top of it because you're not, uh, unlike other condoms that try to grip you tightly to try and conform to your cock, this one doesn't really try to do that. Uh, it's It's got a little breathing room, and at least for me, and it it kind of sits around and acts more like a, a loose membrane. But it has a really strong ring at the end. So let, let's say that this was a, uh, this didn't have the strips. If I tried to apply this condom to myself, it would not work because the ring is tight enough that it would just not roll easily. Which again, sign of a bad a, a condom that was bad for me. But because I'm using the two plastic strips, it stretches that thing out and it does the rolling action for me. And then by the time I've pulled the plastic strips out, because I have to keep pulling them off, I can't be lazy on it, it's already at the base of my cock. And because the ring is fairly tight, it's not going anywhere. And it also means the condom's fully deployed, which means it's got a little bit of room to grow during the motion. It does everything perfect for me. And because it's like a ripcord for my cock, it does it quickly. I can actually just go, and as long as my thumbs end up at the base of my cock, I've done a good job. So, that is a bit of a revolution for me. And it will be a little bit of a time saver for anybody that needs it. (laughs) And I've now tried these with multiple women. And uh, other than the giggle factor of watching me go, you know, like, uh, it is, it's pretty spectacular. So uh, I I usually, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to ask, and it looks like, Dylan, they're they're, um, non-latex. Yes. Yep. Yep. And um, which is important for me. So mm-hmm. it pretty Yay. much hits everything that I need. Uh, I'm. They are a little more expensive, but how many times have you had to like throw away a condom because you put it on the wrong way? Uh, and, you know, you touch the wrong side of it. So I was like, well, shit. Now I have to throw something or another one, or you fucked it up, or you accidentally broke it, or something like that. This is pretty much gonna work every every time. So uh, I, I'm I'm a fan. And we'll get a link for those up on the show notes as well. We we brought some to a party and everybody loved them. <laughs> yeah, I, like I I feel like I was just pimping a product, right? But I'm I'm kind of a. It's really hard to win me over. If you believe in a product, there's nothing wrong with pimping it. I know, especially I know. if it makes sex better. Yeah, yeah for, I was gonna say for fuck's sake, like I mean, literally. For for sake. Sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, like, exactly. Dylan, for actually fuck for, for fuck's sake. sake. I mean, yeah. it, it actually feels really good too. I know I didn't focus on that, but it feels fucking good. So, yeah. So that was the business that you talked about earlier. Yeah. Okay. See your face across the so you can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the swing set. Check out this podcast, daily blogs, articles, and toy reviews on our website at lifeontheswingset.com and on our site's Twitter feed at on the swing set. Email us at contact at lifeontheswingset.com. Give us a call, leave us a voicemail, send us a text, 573-55-SWING. That's 573-557-9464. You may have noticed on this and the previous episode that we seem to prioritize voicemails. Yeah. Just, just saying. And listeners who've sent questions that we haven't read... I apologize profusely. We are getting through a huge backlog. And I will say, as much as I love, love hearing your stories, it is very difficult for me to cut down very long questions. So very long questions also tend to not be as highly prioritized for episodes unless they have a giant word question in bold and a (laughs) one-sentence question at the bottom. And the rest is just color for me. If you want to tell a story, why don't you send me an email? I uh, would be happy to listen to your story. Preferably in voicemail form, but you know, whatever. It's all <laughs> good. <laughs> Dylan, I'd love to get up to voicemail. There is a three-minute limit. <laughs> if you have an episode idea for us, please share. Email episodes at lifeontheswingset.com with episode idea in the subject line. Don't forget to buy your condoms from the lucky bloke at swingsetcondoms.com. And 
There will be a link to those condoms that Dylan was just raving about, so you can try them for yourself on that website. You can find our other great podcasts like The Gentle Pervert Social Club, Intellectual Foreplay, The Kinky Geeks, Eat the Rudecast, A Damn Good Podcast About Twin Peaks, Sex at a Go-Go, and Tell Me Something Good at swingset.fm. We are still holding a lonely vigil outside of Google's headquarters with giant signs that say, <sighs> how do you like this explicit content, Google? Check out Katie Mack's other podcast, Carnal Copia, with <laughs> Ashley Manta at thecarnalcopia.com. And finally, you can buy My Life on the Swing Set, Adventures in Swinging and Polyamory as an ebook, paperback, or audiobook at mylifeontheswingset.com and pre-order my novel, A Life Less Monogamous, and save 25% on the ebook or paperback at alifelessmonogamous.com. Happy New Year, everybody. Thanks for swinging by. <laughs>